developers always sitting down? Because they have too many stand-ups. Please welcome to the stage self-taught engineer Zakaria Mohammed. Hello, everyone. Salam alaikum, I should say. <laughs> Got used to doing a lot of these, but never to a Muslim community, so that's quite nice. Uh, my name is Zakaria Mohammed. I am a senior software engineer, and today I'm going to be telling you guys about how to go from an idea to a, of an app to actually building the app and so forth. All right, so who am I? That's uh, me, by the way, me and my little brother. We went to a uh, football game, Liverpool and United, and I managed to buy the seats on the wrong side. <laughs> so that was quite fun, yeah. I told him, I told him, he's a Liverpool fan, so I told him, you're not allowed to wear the kit. We have to celebrate with the City fans today, and he played his part. <laughs> All right, so this is my name, and this is how to spell it, if you're trying to find me on LinkedIn later on. Uh, and I am a self-taught software engineer. So the way I go into tech is I, I watched a lot of TV shows growing up, and one of those TV shows was Mr. Robot. And I would see Mr. Robot, and he would do all these like, cool hacking scenes and stuff like that. And that kind of inspired me when I was younger. And uh, when I was about 18, after college, I decided that university just really wasn't for me. And I'd seen all these YouTubers online getting developer jobs in a short amount of time, just taking courses online. So I was like, I could probably do the same thing. Can't be that hard. If all these, people, if all these YouTubers are doing it, it can't be that difficult. So what I ended up doing was uh, I bought a few courses on Udemy, and I kind of just worked through that. And around the one-year mark, I got my uh, first job. Um, I specialize in the back-end development. So for you who doesn't know the difference between back-end and front-end, front-end is kind of everything you can see on the website, so the HTML, the CSS, the styling kind of thing. And the back-end is like uh, everything you can't see, so the database and that kind of thing. Uh, all right. And outside of that, I like to build different projects. So um, those projects are usually apps. So some of the apps I've done in the past was when I was first getting started, I built a food review app. So instead of going to a restaurant and reviewing the whole restaurant overall, you just review the single meal. So if you go to a restaurant and you have a burger, you just review the single burger instead of reviewing the whole restaurant overall. Uh, that's one of the projects I've done. I've done several projects since then. Uh, the biggest project I've done app-wise is probably a uh, shopping app that I built, which randomly got a lot of downloads in Canada, which didn't really make any sense because I, I made it for the UK market. So what I ended up doing was uh, I built the chat functionality in the app so I could talk to my users. And then I was like, why are you guys downloading this app? It's not meant for you guys. <laughs> And what it turned out was there was a huge Canadian supermarket change that didn't have an app on the App Store, and that kind of got me thinking. I was like, I could probably build an app for these customer base and see how things go. So I spent the next three months redesigning, redeveloping the app, and writing scraping scripts <laughs> to uh, scrape the products from that store and put that on my own app, and I released the app making it known that it wasn't the official app. I put a little blueprint at the bottom saying, PS, not the official app. And a lot of people started downloading it. I got about 16,000 users using it. And yeah, it was quite fun. But in the end, it was costing too much to maintain the service for free. So uh, after six months or so, I had to shut things down. Uh, outside of that, I like to do, I like to stay active. When you sit down for as much as time as software engineers do, which is pretty much all day long, and if you do projects outside of work, it is all day long. Then uh, you need things to keep you active. So outside of that, I like to play football. I go swimming, and I do CrossFit, for those of you who know what CrossFit is. I'm going to go into too much detail. Uh, and obviously, I like to play games like every other Somali person out here. I play FIFA. <laughs> I'm not particularly good, but you know it's fun to play. And uh, Call of Duty. All right, so let's talk about the agenda for today's talk. First, we talk about the app, app idea evaluation. So you have an idea for an app, but is it worth carrying out, and how do you go about doing it? Secondly, we're talking about picking the perfect technology stack. So you have an idea for an app, the app is worth carrying out, how do you build it? And thirdly, we talk about crafting an MVP and trying to get to the market as quickly as possible. And we'll finish off with a conclusion. So app idea evaluation. So you have an idea for an app, and you're thinking, is it worth carrying out? Is it worth investing time in? So I say the first thing you should think about is who are your target audience, okay? Who are you building this app for? What problem are you solving? Secondly, analyze the competition. More often than not in this day and age, when you come up with an idea for an app or anything, someone else has already done it. And that's not usually a problem. You can go and see what the competitors are doing. Maybe you can download their app, find out what their weak points are, find out what their strengths are, and then work from that. Thirdly, determine your app's USB. So you've seen an app on the App Store, someone else has the exact same idea as you have, which happens to me all the time. How do you stand out from the crowd? 
and then you estimate market size and growth. So there's an idea out there, you're thinking about doing it, is there enough, is, is the market big enough for multiple people to do the same thing? And explore monetization strategies. You don't necessarily have to have this one figured out right from the get-go, but it's something that's important to keep in mind, because more often than not, you build something and a lot of people start using it and you can't afford to maintain it kind of thing. So it's good to start thinking about that early on and validate with customers as soon as possible. You have an idea, try to get a prototype out as soon as possible. That doesn't even have to be a finished product. You can do some designs, mock-ups, get it out to people, and get feedback as quickly as possible. So let's talk about picking the right technology stack. In this day and age, which I'm saying too many times now, <laughs> there's a lot of technologies you can choose from, and you have to decide which technology is right for what you're trying to build. So decide on what core functionalities that you want to have included in your app. So if you're trying to do a food app, for example, or a restaurant app. Search is quite important, so you might be thinking about maybe using Elasticsearch. Uh, prioritize performance, so don't necessarily just do, choose technologies that you are familiar with or technologies that you've worked with. Try to expand your skill set and think about technologies that can um, have good performance for the end user. And consider the target platform. So if you're trying to build an app, you have to think about, am I building this just for iPhone people? Am I building it for Android people? Am I doing it for both? There's a lot of good solutions out there for uh, building cross-platform applications, and there's also good ones doing it natively. Preferably, myself, I like to do stuff for iPhone because everyone knows has an iPhone, and if you don't have an iPhone, you should get one. <laughs> <laughs> and ensure scalability. So whatever technologies you do decide to go with, make sure the technologies can scale up to handle the traffic. So you build an app, Think about the back-end services, for example. So you, you have an app, and you have customers, and you have your back-end, and maybe you're using an EC2 instance, for example, and maybe you go for the cheapest option, and then you start getting users, and then you realize that the EC2 instance keeps going down, or you can't handle the traffic. So one thing to keep in mind is how can you build something that can easily scale up when it comes to it? And accelerate development. Try to find technologies that can easily allow you to add new functionality and quickly change things as you go along. And try to find something with strong community, usually. Less important this day and age, I think with uh, chat GPT, you can pretty much just ask it for anything. Um, whenever I'm building something now, and if I've done the same thing over and over again, or if I, I'm very tired, it's like 12 o'clock and I can't be asked to think, I'll just ask chat GPT to do it, and then I'll copy and paste the code. <laughs> Which isn't a good idea all the time, but most of the time, it's, um, if you know what the right solution looks like, you can just have a look at it and make a few adjustments. All right, let's talk about building an MVP. So you have an idea for an app, the app is worth carrying out, you've decided technologies, how do you go about actually building it? So another point I'll cover again is prioritize essential features. So focus on the most important thing. A lot of mistakes I've seen a lot of people do when it comes to not, not necessarily just building apps, but building services, is trying to build a lot of features as much as they can instead of just focusing on the essential features. One mistake that's very common is trying to build something you, you think the customer wants, but the customer doesn't actually want. So try to get to market as early as possible with just the most important features. So to give you guys an example, right now I am building an app for uh, Muslims in general that will have like everything the Muslim can need. So everything from like prayer times to Quran to Hadith and everything. And instead of spending maybe months trying to build an app that has everything involved, I'm trying to build just the essential features first. So Qibla to begin with and prayer times just for a small city like Birmingham, small compared to London. Um, and trying to get that as soon as possible instead of waiting months trying to build something and then realizing that no one wants to use it. I'm trying to figure things out as I go along kind of thing. Uh, User-eccentric design. One common thing that I've seen a lot of engineers do and one problem that I make myself as well is thinking that just because you can build the product, you can design the product, okay? I've built a lot of apps in the past, and most of them, they're not very designed very well, because I think, yeah, I know what I'm trying to do. I go out there, and I just figure things out as I go along, instead of having a good design to start off with it, and that causes a lot of issues. So for anyone out there that's thinking about building an app, when it comes to this stage, pay someone to design the app for you or pair up with their designer. If you're a programmer, you're probably like me, and you can't design anything. <laughs> And rapid prototyping. Try to get a smallest version of the app out as quickly as possible, get feedback as quickly as possible, and make rapid changes. Adaptability. So when you get your app into the hand of real customers, you'll be quickly able to get feedback from your customers, and then they can tell you what, important, what features they want to see in the app, what things that are important to them, and then based on that, you can quickly add functionality or remove functionality as you need to go. And obviously, the lead methodology, which is learn and measure and then build. So get your app out there to the real people, learn from how they're using the app, 
and then based on that data, make the changes you need to do to build the service that you need. And one important thing to keep in mind is one quote that I read a few years ago that has been very important to me is that start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. Just because you have an idea for an app doesn't mean you need to have it all figured out when you're getting started. The idea sometimes is it's enough. Just start there. You have an idea. Maybe you want to build an app. Maybe you want to pair up with someone. Maybe you want to do it yourself. If you want to do it yourself, you can go. You can take courses online. You can learn how to build an app. You don't need to have it all figured out before you start, but just try to start something. Do some research. Maybe buy the domain name. Maybe try to find people online that have the necessary skills to help you. Maybe try to pair up with a designer. Don't wait for some day or the right day to get started. Just start as soon as you can, and you'll figure things out as you go along. And conclusion, key takeaways, and next steps. Uh, in this, oh, OK, sorry. Uh, how much time do I have? <laughs> oh, OK, fair enough. Uh, in this day and age, it's easy to build apps. There's a lot of courses online. Buy a course, finish it, build an app. You don't need to be perfect. Just get started and make changes as you need to go. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us.